Hello everyone, I'm Brian, welcome back, and let's go ahead and continue. Hmm. Sadhguru, uh, last year in this month only, in the month of September, there was a very big movement, a student movement, particularly the girls came out, uh, demanding for some of their rights. And nowadays, in few years, few last few years, we have seen a number of movements <coughs> happening in uh, different universities, uh, different colleges. My question is that, do you think these movements which are led by students particularly, are based on ideologies or are they just the reaction of something? Well, see... Uh, I, well, he didn't say what those movements are about and to say rights, that's kind of weird. <clears throat> Again, I don't know, is there something lacking? Uh, what is the movement based on? Every human <clears throat> being would like some sense of justice and balance in the situations in which they exist. Whether it's home or university or street, you want some sense of uh, equity in what's happening. Even within the home there is injustice, many times we fight, isn't it? Hello? So the same thing in the university, the same thing on the street, same everywhere. But what we need to understand is, let's take family as a structure, there is a structure, something is being managed, your parents are not experts in all kinds of justice systems and ideologies and everything, they are just doing what they know best, yes? Out of their love and concern, they are doing what they know best. Mm -hmm. Is it always perfect? No, parents are never perfect, isn't it? Hello? They are never perfect, they are doing their best, what they know best. Maybe you as a young person think what they're doing is no good, maybe, but they're doing their best. If they're not doing their best, we can remind them. You're not doing your best, then I will not, I will not do my best if this happens, <laughs> something. Or a more creative way of doing things is, when they don't do their best, you really do your best so that they will feel, oh, what am I doing? Yes, these are different ways to correct a situation. But there are certain people who think, if a thorn gets into their foot, they believe you must cut off the leg. There are a lot of people like this. If a thorn got into your foot, what should you do? Carefully remove the thorn and walk on, isn't it? But right now there are many people, if thorn gets into the foot, they will claim, come on, let's amputate the leg, let's amputate the leg, campaign will start. <coughs> Before… before we protest and uh, deride somebody else, try to pull somebody else down, we must take little time and see, suppose if I am in that place, if all these people are saying thousand different things, how would I manage? You must see this. Right now, the people who are managing this situation, are there some superhuman beings, they know how to do everything, they don't know. They are trying to do their best. If they're not doing their best, we can key them up a little bit. We should. We should remind them that they should do their best. But expecting a miraculous situation where thousand people in India, if there are three people, there are five opinions, all right? <laughs> so we are such a country where for everything we have a question, even if so-called divine entities come, we just… barrage of questions we throw at them. <laughs> yes or no? When Shiva comes, we throw questions, Krishna comes, we throw questions, whoever comes, we throw thousands of questions, we are that kind of people. So naturally, there will be many things, it's okay, we are that kind of people. But questioning something is one thing, always trying to dismantle the existing structure is another thing. If you dismantle <coughs> the existing structure, are you capable of creating a better structure? This is something you must consider. Right now, the existing structure may be lousy. The existing structure may be utterly lousy. But the question is right now, are we competent? Do we have the resource? Do we have the time to create a better structure? This is something we must look at. The problem right now is, we are going about busy judging everybody. The kind of judgments that we ourselves will not pass, can I tell you a joke? A lady 
went into the butcher's shop. You know all those chicken, they were all hanging there, dressed chicken. Somehow for some reason, feathers are the dress of the chicken, we pull off all their feathers and then we say they're dressed <laughs> They were colorfully dressed but we pulled off everything, then we say they're dressed. So these dressed chicken were hanging there, dead of course. <laughs> the lady went there and uh, lifted one wing, wrinkled her nose, lifted one leg, wrinkled her nose. Like this she went from chicken to chicken, chicken to chicken. There were many other customers, they were all feeling uneasy because the way she's wrinkling her nose, maybe they're old, maybe it's getting rotten, they're all looking. The butcher saw that it's going to seriously affect his business this way. So he went and uh, tapped her on the shoulder, she looked back. He asked, ma'am, <coughs> would you pass a test like that <laughs> This is all you have to check, would you pass a test like that <laughs> I think I know what he's talking about, but I, I actually want to… want to throw this out there. Uh, let me know if you agree or disagree, if you want to say anything at all. See if you get what I'm saying as well. Going back to the, the thorn in the foot, say um, you, you, you're walking, all of a sudden you, you step on something, you're like, ah, oh, there's a thorn, they say chop it off, chop it off. <clears throat> Let's say they chop it off and they look at the foot, it's like, where's the thorn? There's no thorn. Well, in that scenario, because in his scenario, there is a problem. A thorn did, in fact, go into the <clears throat> into your foot. Your pro, your right to react to it, to take it off or whatever. But the fact that is that the act on something that wasn't there, as opposed to where in Sadhguru's scenario, the fact that there is still something there, and and you take the appropriate reactions. And then in some scenarios where I'm noticing, in. Uh, and over here is that they act on a scenario that wasn't there. So the the, the damage is already done. They looked. They were, he he did in fact the person did in fact step on something, but it wasn't a thorn. It was just like a, a rock that never got you know never got stuck into the foot. But they reacted to it, chopped off the foot because they thought it was a thorn that was stuck. Looked at it, nothing there, nothing stuck. It was just a uh, you know pain that resonates a little bit after you step on something. <clears throat> So this is more along the scenarios of uh, a lot of people reacting and claiming something and, um, and having judgment done to someone, but the reality is that person never done anything. Like it basically false imprisonment, I suppose is one great example and false accusations where the, the reputations have already been damaged. I just want to add that on top of his, his story as well, because I thought of that and the weirdest thing is because of certain scenarios that happens in America too. You know, when, you, when there's a problem with the foot, yeah, you can overreact by chopping off the foot or take a look back and, you know, use the right tools to remove the problem. Or you step on or step on something, and you're like, oh my gosh, let me look. And you're like, huh, well, there's no real damage. It was painful at first, but it wasn't really any damage at all. So you, you react to a scenario, but when you look at it, it's like, okay, it wasn't really that bad after all. <laughs> you know, kind of like you step, you're like, oh my god, I'm dying. And there's no, there's nothing. Hmm. A little indent there for when I step on something, but other than that, skin's not broken. You know, a little overreaction onto something. So, uh, Sadhguruji, uh, when uh, I started saying you are a cool dude, and uh, I saw you, I'm following you for the last three to four years, and uh, you have been doing rally for rivers, youth and truth also is. Is the idea that you have uh, invented? Little, if you hold it little. Uh, the youth and truth idea that little you volume for him, please. Youth and truth idea that you invented and uh, for rally for rivers also. Sometimes I think that you have a lot of responsibilities uh, for this. And and I've seen your video. One in in one video you are saying that uh, you are working for 16 to 18 hours a day because you are made to work because you need to work for this country. Or uh, in one of the video I saw it. A lot of responsibilities on you, sir. Lot? No. A lot of responsibilities. All of it, huh? All of it, huh? <laughs> a lot of responsibilities, sir. So, uh, either you can just transfer to some of them to me also. But uh, the thing is that 
uh, when you apply we will consider uh, I, will, <laughs> I, will, I will be applying by tomorrow sir <laughs> so the thing is that uh, what i feel that sometimes or the, or the other there are certain few people who are taking the responsibility but many a times people are scared of the responsibilities taking the responsibilities mm-hmm. you have taken the respo- responsibilities for rivers for others for planting trees and other things for you also and yeah, for me also you <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but there is certain times when the people are scared of responsibility mm-hmm. yes. is it does it taste good like chicken or something else <laughs> <laughs> see responsibility hmm? does everybody hear that word clearly <coughs> responsibility means response ability your ability to respond i'm asking you would you like to retain your ability to respond to every dimension of life that you face i'm asking you hello some of you are saying no why <laughs> if you have no respo- if you don't have the ability to respond that is when you feel fearful helpless if you have retain the ability to respond whatever can be done you will do in your life if mm. you do not do what you cannot do no problem but if you do not do what you can do you're a disaster <laughs> i am not a disaster <laughs> everything that i can do i will do will everything happen ah uh, maybe not let me tell you how big a failure i am okay is that okay <laughs> <laughs> when uh, actually yesterday 23rd of september is 36 years since certain things happened within me and my life dramatically changed i was going about my business successful making money everything good but suddenly this experience hit me in such a big way everything changed it was on that little hill called chamundi in mysore it was on 23rd of ah, september okay. 1982 so on this day i happened to be in kashi thanks to all of you for having me <laughs> so when this happened i am just sitting there doing nothing simply every cell in my body is exploding with ecstasy i thought this is it i have discovered something that if you don't do anything you will be overflowing with ecstasy <coughs> there's really no problem i, I i'm sorry I, uh, I, this is the story he told in his uh inner engineering book about the uh, the thing that clicked in his head he was so successful in business and everything and all of a sudden he just took a trip up to the mountains and just meditated and something clicked it's like i discovered happiness let me spread it throughout the world <laughs> then i made a plan in two and a half years time at that time the human population was 5.6 billion people so i made a plan in two and a half years time i will make the entire population blissful because i know the technology you don't have to do anything simply if you sit here not doing anything everything will explode see 36 years huh <laughs> i'm still talking to you not it got new okay <laughs> maybe we've touched over 500 million people but that's not my idea of the world there are 7.6 billion people so i know i will die a terrible failure but i will die blissfully because everything that i can do i have done successful failure can be a good word for you no blissful failure <laughs> so <laughs> now in your life the choice is this you can have one constipated desire okay my only ambition is i want to build one little house for myself that happened and you are a success but a stupid success constipated success my wish for all of you young people is you must have that kind of a desire which cannot be fulfilled in this life if you take two steps in that direction if your desire if your desire for well being includes everybody if your desire is all inclusive most probably it will not happen before you die isn't it but you took a few steps in that direction 
that's great. Instead of having a constipated desire and you had it fulfilled in next five years and you think you're on top of the world, what is the point of such a desire? So, I'm wishing you failure, I want you to understand. <laughs> but a blissful failure <laughs> because the only reason, the only reason you suffer responsibility is you're always afraid whether it'll happen or not happen. Why are you afraid of that? Because your joy, your <laughs> happiness, your peacefulness is dependent upon how the world responds to you, not how you are. <clears throat> First, let me ask you this fundamental question. Before you answer the question, I, this is something, again, that kind of… that turn my my thinking around again I, I talk about this in a few videos before about when i went to world religion and was learning about buddhism that particular part where um the two phrases the world is suffering uh, is one phrase the world is nothing but suffering essentially <clears throat> and and the second one is the fact that uh, you give it 110 percent you know do your best but expect nothing from it if it fails, you expected nothing from it. If it succeeds, well, that's great. <laughs> and those two words has changed how I looked at life and how I've become less suffering in life. Not completely out of suffering, but just less suffering. And those, just those two phrases, let me say that, <laughs> those two phrases has made a big change. And amazingly, that's what he just said here, the, uh, the um, expect nothing from life, essentially. You are referred to as a human being, yes? Human being. We did not call other creatures tiger being, ant being, elephant being, we did not call them that, yes? We call this one as human being. What it means is, this one knows how to be. They all exist in reaction to outside situations, but this one knows how to be. This is why we know how to respond, not react, how to respond. This is why this is a responsible creature. If you know how to be, would you keep yourself blissful or miserable? Blissful. If you're blissful, what is the consequence of your action? Would it really matter? You'll do your best. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. Hello? Yes. But when you're shit scared of what will happen, what will happen, what will happen, <laughs> you will reduce your desire and responsibility so small. Essentially because of fear, isn't it? But if you're really blissful by your own nature, you know how to be. You're a human being, you know how to be. If you know how to be, does it matter how far your actions go or do not go? Our actions will depend on the times in which we exist, isn't it? People are, uh, you know, like I was uh, at the World Economic Forum and all these people usually coming and saying many things like this. One professor from the Harvard University comes up to me and says, Oh, you're that amazing tree planter? <laughs> I say, no, no, I'm not a tree planter. <laughs> then, no, no, you planted millions of trees. Yes, I planted, but I'm not a tree planter. <laughs> planted the idea. <laughs> then he asked, what do you do? I said, uh, I make people flower. Oh. <laughs> so why I planted trees is not because I am a tree planter. Simply because, you know, one day it happened, two men were working, government employees. One man was digging on the roadside, behind him another man was coming and closing these pits and coming. Somebody else was passing by, they saw this ridiculous activity and they backed up and they came and said, Hey, what are you doing here? This guy is digging, this guy is closing, what is this? They said, no, no, I'm doing my job, he's doing his job. <laughs> the in-between person was a tree planter, he's missing <laughs> Because… <laughs> because that tree planter has been on a leave for a long time, I stepped in, I'm not a tree planter, nor am I a river saver, okay? Because that person is missing, I stepped in. Sadhguru, as we grow up, we are often told uh, or it is fed in our minds since childhood that life is a race. You need to keep running and be perfect. Oh. 
Yeah, no kidding. You are a driver also, sir. F1, F1 racer, sir. <laughs> you are a driver also, sir. F1 racing car. You drive bikes, sir. <laughs> that was the main advertisement that we put up in the bag. Now, uh, if life is a race, if life is a race, you must win it, isn't it? Winning it means what? You must get to the finish line today. Harish Chandragat. You can choose Manikarnika or Harish Chandragat, which one is your choice? Hello, if it's a ra if it's a race, you must cross the finish line ahead of everybody else, isn't it? <laughs> so whoever this idiot who is telling you life is a race, <laughs> ask them to finish… cross the finish line <laughs> Uh, life is a race and uh, it's a good point but uh, what we can say, we are taught like this only. So, I, I don't say that uh, the people who taught me is an idiot because that will… Uh, I am on camera. So, <laughs> so uh, what I feel is that uh, giving certain tips of responsibilities, I saw certain godman also in this country. I'm saying literally godman, I'm not saying uh, any particular person. But uh, I see, uh, sometimes I see that uh, there are many uh, people who are uh, the stronging their ways, who are just uh, giving the puja to the Godman, the uh, life creature is like a Godman. So, uh, I w once I feel that though why those people are like uh, doing a puja of him, but second times I thought how powerful and how intelligent that Godman is, he's able to convince them that I, I am a God. He's able to convince those people that I am a God, so that is also an intelligence. So, is this a country where the people are so foolish that they are following just a person and… Uh, not not saying a word of foolish, but uh, is there a following a person and treating him like a god or is that godman so intelligent that he's able to convince them? See, just now you said you're on the camera, you don't want to call people who crocs… Uh, who says life is a race as idiots, but you're calling the whole tradition as foolish <laughs> No, sir, the, no, no the I will come, I will answer the question <laughs> See, uh, this word God-man is a media-invented word. There is nobody anywhere I have seen who claimed I am a God-man. I have seen men and I have seen goddamn men <laughs> I have not seen a God-man anywhere. Have you seen a God-man anywhere? Hello, anybody? No. Somebody is sitting there, somebody else. Right now, uh, to Malviya ji, we garland him. Well, is he a god? No, he did something that we revere. He did something that we value. So we offer our respects to him by putting a mala. Oh, you put garland on him, so you made a deity of him. Yes, because the man did something in his life which we all benefit and value, so we bow down to him. <laughs> so this… See, there is… there is logic of various levels, don't think there's only one logic. There is rudimentary logic, there is little high above, there is very fine logic also. Now, people who worship looking up, saying there is our God is up there, and that looks okay to you, because first of all, this whole Uparwala business, first thing you… are you on a round planet? You sure? <laughs> okay. Planet is round and the thing is spinning all the time. If you look up, inevitably you're looking up in the wrong direction. <laughs> you are not even on the North Pole, you are in Kashi. <laughs> you are like this, looking up in the wrong direction all the time, all 360 degrees. So, do you know in this cosmos, which side is up? Is it marked somewhere, this side up? <laughs> no. So you don't even know which side is up, but you know who is up. I think that's very stupid. So in this culture we taught you that. Today this modern science also, I want you to understand this. Whether you take an atom or a cosmos or the cosmos, over ninety-nine point nine nine nine, whatever number of nines, 
is actually empty. Only little bit material in the atom, you know this? What… what is your subject, I'm sorry? Law. Oh <laughs> You could argue for all the wrong things <laughs> Anyway, this is science <laughs> that <laughs> over ninety-nine percent, ninety-nine point nine some eleven times or fourteen times something, I don't know the exact number, that much of the atom is empty space. Only little bit is material, tiny, minuscule. In the minuscule, it's minuscule. The same is true with the cosmos also has similar proportions, over ninety-nine percent is empty space. Only specks of stars and planets and galaxies, only small specks, rest is all empty space. But this empty space seems to have some intelligence of its own, that it keeps all this physical material going around in a certain way. Because how much ever we study, we see that the physical material itself doesn't carry the needed intelligence, something else is driving it, obviously. So the simplistic, childish way of coming to it is, there is one man sitting up there and managing everything. But when you look at the size of the cosmos, one man managing things is… just naturally goes. Women are today arguing, why can't it be a woman? Yes? <laughs> I was speaking to a group of people, in Nashville in United States, I was just telling them a joke. In the joke, I referred to God as he. Immediately, lady stood up. <laughs> said, do you believe God is a man? Whoa, 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 I know what I gotten into <laughs> I said, see, I was only telling you a joke. It doesn't matter, you said him? Mm -hmm. Now in United States is a big argument, why can't God be a woman? They tried to settle it in the previous election <laughs> What year was this? But you know the results <laughs> I have to look at the year when this came out. Then uh, there are also arguments like this, see <coughs> You've heard of Idi Amin? Idi Amin, the Uganda man. Idi Amin declared, God is black. I agree with him <laughs> because if a white man can have a white God, why can't a black man have a black God? So in the southern churches in United States, the big debate happening is God, white or black. Actual debates happening. Oh, gosh. You know, in the previous election, they tried to settle that affair. Didn't work <laughs> but you know, we in India know God is brown <laughs> yeah. Because you know, those people don't know. Because to those places God sent only his messenger, son or somebody else and somebody else. Here God himself arrived nine times <laughs> Now, 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 especially Indians who are living outside the country are super proud about this. God came to our country nine times <laughs> So I keep reminding them that is because God wouldn't trust anybody else with Indians <laughs> He knew, he knew his son, his messenger, nobody would be good for the Indians. So he came hands on himself. Nine times and he failed <laughs> See, nine or ten times you can debate, failure is not debatable, isn't it? It's visible. Hello? Failure is very visible, isn't it so? So, we can go on endlessly with these things, but your belief systems are culturally relevant, existentially not relevant. So you must understand this is a godless culture. Here, we revered people who contributed to our life. Our parents, we bow down to them. If you see… if you Shiva comes also, this is what you do, is it? Isn't it so? If you see a tree also, this is what we do. 
You see, cow also, this is what we do. Even a snake, a cow gave us milk, so we bow down. A snake, because he didn't bite us today, we bow down <laughs> I'm saying, we are doing the same act what we do to God, to man, woman, child, animal, everybody, isn't it so? Then why are you calling a particular man, God, man? We are bowing down to everybody, aren't we? Sadhguru, uh, nowadays youth are so active on social media and we have been using that platform for various purposes. We even use that for this Youth and Truth program, popularizing it here in Varanasi. We asked for several questions on the social media also and we selected the famous one, the most famous one out of those questions. So I have one question. It is Pranav who asked, at home they teach us how to behave with girls, but when I go out with my friends, we see something different, which is totally different. When I go online, the things are crazy. How is a man supposed to behave with or uh, treat a woman? <coughs> Ooh, uh, I mean, I, 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 sorry, I paused it. Oh, because I want to put, put in my little two cents in there. <laughs> I hope that's what you came here for, anyways. Again, if you want to watch this uninterrupted, please, the link's in the description. If not, because of a massive update, you can see the title, you can copy my title and search for it. That's actually very interesting, because I do watch a lot of uh, kind of dating videos, I suppose, or it's kind of the red pill things on YouTube. <clears throat> I don't necessarily like them, per se, a particular reason why. It's, it's, it's too, too one-sided. Uh, there needs to be a balance, only because I fear that this, while what they're saying is true for the most part, um, it could uh, it could feed into the ego of uh, people. Like in, in Western culture, or in my opinion, women are praised or raised up. You can't speak bad about them. How dare you? But yet you say the exact same thing to men. It's kind of acceptable. <laughs> um, and that's the problem. So the fact that and at least from my observation, uh, women are generally, you know, they want to see women succeed. They want women to be strong. They want women to do what they want. But there's this kind of, I guess, this creeping corruption. I don't know. I don't know, I don't know what to say to it. But ego, this creeping ego that all of a sudden they, that they they keep getting fed these things, and now they're starting to believe that. They can literally do anything. That they can hit men and 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 make it to the top, and uh, and they need to make it to the top. And if they don't, it's because of other people holding them down. Like not not women, but men or or certain race of people. You know, it, it just becomes either becomes sexist or racist in in lots of ways, just because whatever may be the complaint. Instead of thinking that maybe it's you know they're they don't want they don't want to do that kind of job and they don't want to put that much effort into that kind of job or whatever it is or maybe again feeding into their minds like no I need to do this and I have to be successful even though I don't want to be and that's, there's a lot of pressure I do believe that there's a lot of pressure of women in that where they have to be the successful they have to have all this and it's very difficult very few men and very few women can actually do that and I think a lot of women who can't do that are being pressured into it and they're becoming very unhappy really weird spin-off there but <laughs> with these things though it, it changes the, the dynamic of dating where it's like a lot of women who are trying to be successful and have all this ego are now still wanting traditional men when they themselves are not traditional women which is something that I see a lot again in these red pill videos I like the truth that they speak I don't like the fact that it's too much one-sided it I think it develops a very bad ego on the opposite end. Like talking how men ha are all this and women are all bad, and then you get some men who start thinking like, "Yeah, all women are bad and men are good and they're not doing anything bad." It's like, no, there's terrible people on both sides. There needs to be a balance in and uh, and about the good and the bad of both sides. Otherwise, it gets what do you call it? It, it becomes one-sided and it's terrible. Well, uh, a woman is. Uh... A woman is not a separate species, first of all. <laughs> no, of course not. They're from Venus. We're from Mars. <laughs> this too much of man-woman thing is being done, unfortunately. It's a small biological difference to serve a certain purpose. We're all here today because of this difference, yes? 
because we have a mother and a father, have, one happens to be a woman in that. Because of that, we are born and we are here. So, we don't have to treat women like separate species. There was a time, we must understand this, there was a time when the world was such that a woman couldn't really go out and do much because of the nature of the world around. Suppose, right now, you know, uh, I don't know, maybe two, three thousand people turned up from many parts of the world for yesterday's event in Kashi. I think in this more than sixty percent are women. Now, suppose this was thousand years ago, it would be ninety-five percent men, only five percent women maybe <coughs> because to travel by walk or by on a horseback and to come to Kashi from thousand miles away would be a challenging thing for a woman, would… would not be very safe for a woman those days. But today, you must understand it's not your liberal attitude which has brought women reasonably level, just technology. Real quick, it's, it was dangerous just in general for men and women. Technology has leveled the difference because your big muscle is no more useful. You need some brain <laughs> What's that? There was a time when man's muscle did everything on this planet. When man's muscle did everything on this planet, naturally man was dominant. This dominance also is misunderstood. Mm -hmm. He dominated in one arena which was filmed and reported. She dominated in a different arena which was private and not reported. <laughs> But because we have taken to Western modes of living right now very much, because of that, we have this… Uh, this controversy has been going on with me for last week, ten days, because I said, if you make economics the only value of your life, money is the only prime mm. value in your life, then world will become very male because there will be no room for the feminine to find expression. There may be women, but they will surrender their feminine to be successful, unfortunately. This should not happen. Women should succeed as women, mm. not as men. Ah, uh, one hundred percent agree with that. And again, um, this is something that uh, again with the dating videos, this is the reason why I enjoy watching those da dating videos because you get to see the mentality of people. <laughs> I wish I could find the opposite uh, of uh, of the the female dating videos um, and seeing if they can find these these men. But I think I know everything they'd say. They're just dumb. <laughs> like the 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 kind of women that they find sometimes in these panels that they talk to are don't understand real what I call realities of life. And the reason why it's a patriarchal world is because men had to build it. Men did the most riskiest job. More men died trying to build society. And women died too by giving birth to men and women. <laughs> and um, But yes, and this is something I think I said sometime before is that, and that's something I, I honestly did not think about is tech. I did a little bit, let me say that, I did a little bit, but he really brought it out, it's technology r really liberated women a lot. It's not that men was holding women down, it's just the sheer fact, and this is how I came up with this example, especially to those people who are like, oh, women can run the world and all that, or, or, or thinking that m men were suppressing women. It's like, okay, let's take away the dishwasher, let's take away the, the washer and dryer, let's take away all the power tools that makes, you know, manual job easier. So do you want to work and lift heavy boulders, bringing it up some staircase and coming back down, lifting concrete on your back, going up to build these, you know, big towers, skyscrapers, because, you know, there's no machines to lift it up. Or would you rather work at home, just keep the house clean when your husband comes home after a hard day's work? Because that's the way it was before all these technological advancements. Now women can do some of these jobs. Obviously, not, perhaps not lifting like super heavy stuff, but there's I think they're developing like exoskeletons where eventually, again, man's muscles are becoming less and less prevalent because of lifting techniques and lifting tools to help. And then you have cranes that could lift like massive amount of uh, 
steel beams up like 20 stories or whatever so it's not it's men becoming less and less prevalent like you were saying about technologies about of men becoming less prevalent but also women becoming more free because they're now more capable but also because the the world has been kind of tame in some sense that you're no longer worried about you know bandits or wild animals or like really bad weather like hurricanes or earthquakes or volcanoes or whatever you know a lot of that's been kind of tempered and now women are starting to rise up i've heard of phrases like you know feminism's only a first world thing and it's i mean i don't know how true that is but it seems like it because again in underdeveloped areas you know there's not too much technology i I, as a matter of fact before watching this video i did end up watching a uh, video of my home country and the slums of it and you know it kind of sucks and but you see people there are generally happy they're poor but they have a very nice relationship between men and like the father and mother and wife and husband because they have to cooperate to survive now you don't have to cooperate to survive you can just be all by yourself and survive just fine and it's kind of it's sad to think of it that way the fact that life is so much easier now you're unhappy with the partner or ha- unhappy with life <laughs> it's really weird <clears throat> With, with full-blown feminine nature, they must be able to be successful in a society. They don't have to pretend to be a man to be successful. This has to go. If this has to go, the world has to move completely from brawn to brain. It's very important, this transition. Now, when you talk about economy or money power, it's brawn. It's a different kind of muscle. Money or muscle, we're talking about it in the same context. Money is another kind of muscle. So we are taking away the physical muscle and bringing in the money muscle. So once again you're creating a male-dominated society, masculine-dominated society, because now women have understood how to be successful by being masculine. No, this is not a good thing for the world. There must be a world where women can be hundred percent feminine and still be absolutely successful. If this has to happen, money should not be the ruling factor, it should be just currency. Money is just currency to facilitate things. But right now money is a ruling factor, so masculine becomes the dominant force. We need to change this. Unless music, aesthetics, love, uh, beauty and other things, everything becomes equal proportions. Feminine will not flourish and if feminine is wiped out of this planet, then all the men will sit and wonder, why are we living? (laughs) And uh, another thing to add to the the dating thing that I hear about, I mean it's just interesting stuff that I love, uh, uh, it's like I hear that Western men are going to Eastern um, countries because they want a traditional woman. Now. Eastern men don't hate Western uh, Western men because hey, look, the West, uh, the Eastern women are picking them, okay? <laughs> but yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't know what what percentage of that is. You know, you 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 find what you like and you hope to get it, and you can't blame anyone else for you know people's choosing of things. Um, it's I want to say it's not right, but it's just it's it's not right to blame other people for something that. You know, it's a it's a consensual uh, agreement between a man and a woman, whether they're Western or Eastern. You know, don't get me wrong. Like, <laughs> it kind of sucks because, again, and and even in my birth country, women are the one that's actually leaving the country because they're finding um, men from other countries to take them away from that place. And I can't blame them. I mean, uh, you know our country has to become successful and and it's it's doing that and I hope it continues to do that I hope it develops to become a a good country (laughs) I mean I I, it's it's very difficult uh, of course building a country and all that okay I'm gonna pause the video here I think because the moderator is about to ask something so video worth me talking now because it's already about to go in an hour sorry if I talk too much but that's the way it is for me (laughs) I'm trying not to honestly Anyway, here's my big spill, I suppose. But yeah, um, you know, I can't, I can't blame anyone for leaving the country. Much like how we watch the, the talks about Indian people leaving the country to go to Western countries because 
they have to find jobs that are very that pays a lot over there and i understand the resentment towards them but it's it shouldn't be like that um hopefully they become successful and come back home and try to start up something in their birth country but at the same time you can't blame them um kind of like again in my country my birth country anyway uh, but yeah i can't i guess that's all i can really say about it you can't blame people for leaving the country for opportunities because if you have the opportunity to become more successful somewhere else regardless of where it's at then i w then i'm sure you would take it because you know for sure that the place that you're going to is going to be a lot better in terms of jobs not necessarily in terms of culture or anything else it's just about getting a better job and, and hopefully a better life you know uh yeah <laughs> i was gonna say the grass is always greener but uh that could be culturally speaking though <laughs> it looks green over there but probably not but yes in, in, people seek jobs not because they you know they think the culture over there is, is better or that they they're guaranteed a better life but they know that they, there's opportunities for job and hopefully you know they they find a better life or at least the people wherever they move to is decent <laughs> if you don't i mean some people are there are some people who will move to another country to get paid a lot, even though it's terrible. Uh, like contractors will go to very hostile place in the Middle East um, that are like war zones, though, um, and they'll work there and they have a very high chance of getting shot and killed, and they know this, but they'll do it to make a lot of money. So again, this is this is what I point out about the fact that people are willing to go to other countries to get paid more and hope that they just work there for a couple of years and come back home. Um, I'm not saying Middle East countries are all terrible, obviously not, but there are terrible places in the Middle East, and I point this out specifically because I've heard of people um, getting contracted to go out to these very dangerous places where there's very extremist groups, and they have to be, uh, these people have to be an armed guard anytime they go out somewhere, and, but yeah. So anyways, that's at least the end of part two. <laughs> if you like my content, please consider subscribing, thumbs up, thumbs down, down below, thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next vid.